Hi there, this is James from Junior Developer Central and in this video, as you've probably guessed from the title, we're going to be installing the Ubuntu subsystem onto a Windows 10 machine and this will basically give you a, a fully fledged bash prompt on your Windows desktop. Um, so there are some other alternatives that you can use, but this will be an actual emulation of a Ubuntu system on your computer. Uh, so if you have used bash on a, a Mac before or maybe logged on to a, a remote Linux server somewhere to do some tasks it'll be the same sort of prompt that you've used there and this is just a handy way to learn those commands and find your way around it um, using a Windows machine. So the first thing we need to do is just make uh, a couple of setup configuration changes and you need to go to this website for the, uh, the provided by Microsoft uh, I'll put a link to this in the notes below and what you need to do is run a small uh, PowerShell command, so PowerShell being another terminal uh, type program that you may have come across before but specifically for Windows and you actually need to run this command on an elevated an administrative level PowerShell. So if you actually just copy that uh, little script that they've given you there and what you'll need to do is if you just go to your search bar or go to the uh, Windows menu and type in PowerShell and the trick here is to, instead of just left clicking on the PowerShell uh, icon here, is to right click and then choose to run as administrator and you'll get the UAC prompt coming up saying that you need to uh, authorize that. And then what we can do is just copy and paste and right clicking should just do it to put that uh, little PowerShell script into our command prompt. So if we hit enter after that, you'll see it'll go through a few steps and just make sure that your uh, Windows machine is configured to uh, run the Ubuntu or uh, the, the Linux subsystem on a Windows machine. Right, so once that's done, you can close your PowerShell. And the next step we need to do is actually go to the Microsoft Store. So if we just open that up from our start menu. And you can just search for Ubuntu, but the, the actual thing that you're after is if you go to the Run Linux on Windows option at the top here. And you can see you can actually install a variety of window, uh, Linux distributions onto your Windows PC. But just because Ubuntu is probably the most common operating system that you might come across in the Linux world, um, then we'll, we'll go for this at the moment. So if you click on the Ubuntu option, you'll see I've actually gone through the process of uh, getting the software to the PC already. Um, but once you've done that, you will actually get the option to install that. So you'll probably see a, a get uh, option here if you uh, come into this for the first time. One thing that did throw me, uh, this was a new PC that I set this up on and it didn't have the necessary Windows updates already installed and if you don't have the most up-to-date uh, Windows updates already available you might see this greyed out, it might say get is greyed out or install is greyed out so make sure you've run through all of your uh, uh, install updates uh, before you get to this stage and then simply all you need to do after that is just click the install button and give it a few minutes and it will download and install the Ubuntu subsystem directly to the computer. Okay so it's not a massive download but it might take you a, a few minutes depending on your connection speed uh, but once it's downloaded and installed you can then just click the launch button and it does take uh, run a script which takes a few minutes just to kind of finalize those uh, settings um, but once that's finished you're actually good to go. So once that install script is finished you'll have to actually set up a, a new username for the Ubuntu subsystem so this will be the user that would be running under the, the bash prompt that's going to be available to you. So I'm just going to keep it simple and just call the user James and of course you'll need to provide it with a password as well. So I'll just give it something simple there and repeat it to confirm. So now we've got a username with a password as just set. So any of the usual bash commands will work and you've got your own home directory as well which is kind of in the usual traditional Linux style of forward slash home and then forward slash the user. Um, if you actually want to get into the, the Windows machine that you're on, here's a quick tip for you. If you go into the uh, mnt uh, directory forward slash mnt so that's the mount directory you'll see there's actually just one folder in there it's actually a link to the c drive so if i cd into c so i'm in forward slash mount forward slash c and you can see here now i'm into the actual c drive of the 
Windows machine that this is running on. So you can see there's documents and settings and program files, etc. So if I want to access any of those files on the actual Windows PC itself, I can access those from here. So that's pretty much it. There's not too much to it in terms of installing uh, a Linux operating system onto your Windows 10 machine. Uh, as I said before, just make sure you've got all your updates installed. Go through that script to enable the uh, correct uh, sub Linux subsystem on your machine and then you can just head on straight over to the Microsoft Store and then uh, install whichever flavor of Linux you actually want on here. But either way you'll get a bash prompt that you can use on your Windows machine. So I hope you found that useful today. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.